Thanks for joining me in this video. In this video, I will be discussing the most important documents that you want to include when you are filing a spousal sponsorship application. Now, for the purposes of this video, I will be saying spousal sponsorship, but keep in mind that that technically also includes common law as well as conjugal. Um, but it's just easier for people to understand when I say spousal. So there are really five main documentation that you want to include when you are applying for a spousal application. The first is obviously the most important document, which is your marriage certificate. Um, make sure it is a marriage certificate and a marriage license that you include um, because it's not always accepted that you just include one and not the other. So just include both of them if you can. Now, obviously, if you file a common law application, then that instead of the marriage document, you will include a common law declaration that has been notarized um, as well. And um, for conjugal really is documentation to prove why you can't do either of those. Get married and have a marriage license, uh, live together um, for 12 months or more and do and produce a common law declaration. So you kind of are producing information and documentation why neither of those um, you can provide. So again, for spousal is the marriage certificate, for common law is the common law declaration, and for conjugal is proof that you can do both of those. The second set of documentation are your divorce certificates should you or your partner um, have been married in the past. So you want to make sure that you include the divorce certificate. It's important that it's a divorce certificate and not dissolution of marriage. Um, if you include the dissolution of marriage, your file will be returned. Now, there are certain countries as well as certain states in the United States that don't produce a, a divorce certificate. So if it's only the dissolution of marriage that you can get a hold of, you want to make sure you explain in a submission letter or a cover letter why you don't have the actual divorce certificate. Um, because the last thing you want is the documents to come back and then you have to re-explain as to why you've only included the dissolution of marriage. The third, which sounds very silly, but make sure when you include your passport pictures, um, you measure it repeatedly uh, because a lot of files are getting returned be uh, because the passport size uh, photos are not the exact size that the immigration wants. Um, so please measure it accurately and ensure that the photos are exact. Even if it's um, off by a millimeter, uh, your, your application can be returned and I've seen it happen a lot of times and it's very frustrating. Um, and that little silly mistake can cause months of delay. So just double check your photos before you send. The fourth set of documents is uh, joint documentation. I always recommend that if you are filing an overseas application that you include two joint documents um, with you and your partner. And if you are submitting an inland application, make sure you submit three joint documents. And these can be just about anything. It could be credit card bills, it could be a lease agreement, it could be a purchase and sales of property, it could be bank accounts, it could be investments, it could be uh, an insurance policy, it could be a gym membership, it could be just about anything. Um, but I know that for overseas clients, sometimes it's very difficult to even include two joint documents, um, but it's highly, highly recommended. And if you review the list of document checklist on, for the spousal, it's actually one of the requirements. So make sure you include that and then highlight it um, to show the officer that you've included the necessary documents. And obviously the fifth set of documentation is a little bit broad, and this is to prove the genuineness of your relationship. And how you do that is really going back to the beginning of your relationship. So how you met, where you met, who introduced you, write a personal statement, include reference letters, uh, include photos, maximum 20 photos. Um, and anything that proves that your relationship is real. Uh, there has been in the past a few fraudulent marriages and immigration takes that very seriously. So now they're reviewing it very thoroughly to ensure that your marriage or your common law relationship or conjugal relationship is genuine. So include uh, the necessary documentation. If you look at the document checklist as well, it gives you a very uh, brief description as to what immigration will accept and what they will not accept. So as an example, they will not accept phone cards uh, where you, a calling card I should call it, um, they don't accept that and for common sense reasons, uh, when you have a calling card, it's very difficult to track who you call 
called and who's calling you, so those will not be accepted. DVDs, for example, will not be accepted, um, so you really want to print out your photos and label it properly um, for the immigration officer to assess. Um, and so those are really the five major ones, your marriage certificate slash common law declaration slash why you can't have either for conjugal, uh, your divorce certificates, photos are very important, um, uh, joint documents, and obviously the rest of a, the documents to prove your relationship with reference letters, personal statements, and so forth. Um, obviously those are the five big ones. Uh, there's obviously other documentation and other things to prove. There's a lot of complicated cases out there. There are clients who have medical inadmissibilities. There are clients who have criminal inadmissibilities and financial issues and so forth. Obviously that case is a little bit different. Um, so if you are um, a unique case, give us a call, let me assess it and I can tell you in more detail as to what would make a strong application for yourself. I look forward to hearing from you and until next time.